Hello and welcome to my coding course to build a full-fledged admin dashboard by the best tech stack in the world. Next.js 15, React 19, Drizzle ORM and Shad UI. This admin dashboard is the updated version of ACME project on nextjs.org slash learn. Here, I walk you through all steps you need to build a real world admin dashboard from scratch. We will develop a responsive homepage that follows the best design practices we have. A header with hero section and call to action button to log in. A dashboard screen with sidebar navigation on desktop and header menu on mobile devices. We'll implement stat boxes, bar charts, data table on this page. Invoice management to filter, create, update, and delete invoices and customer page to list and filter customers based on their name and email. My name is Basir and I'll be your instructor in this course. I'm a senior web developer in international companies like RY Vision in Montreal and a coding instructor with 50,000 students around the world. You need to open the code editor along with me and start coding throughout this course. I teach you creating admin dashboard web page by Next.js 15 and React 19, designing header, footer, sidebar, menu, and search box by ShadCN and Tailwind, enable partial pre-rendering to improve website performance, create database model by Drizzle ORM and Postgres database to handle invoices, customers, and users, Handling form inputs by use action state and ZOD data validator. Updating data by server actions without using any API. Rendering beautiful charts by recharts package. Handling authentication by next off. Toggling dark and light theme by next theme. And at the end, you will learn how to deploy this beautiful admin dashboard on Versal. I designed this course for beginner web developers who want to learn all new features of Next15 and React19 in a real-world project. If you want to learn advanced topic of Next.js, take this course to become a professional web developer, have a great project in your portfolio, and get a job in more than 22 million job opportunities around the world. The only requirement for this course is having basic knowledge of React and Next. In this lesson, we are going to create next app and homepage of admin dashboard. What we're going to do is to create a page like this. It's the homepage of admin dashboard. We have app logo, app name, welcome message, login button, and hero image of admin dashboard. It's based on your system theme. Let's say I change the theme of my operating system to dark. There we are, we have dark version of this page. It is responsive. So if I open developer tools and toggle device toolbar, I will have mobile version of this admin dashboard homepage. To get the source code of this lesson, open this link, github.com slash basir slash next 15 admin dashboard. Then go to commit section, find commit one, create next app and use this code throughout this lesson. Let's get to code. Here is the plan to create next app and homepage of admin dashboard. First of all, we need to install PNPM as package manager because it's much faster and easier by running this command. On VS Code terminal, you can install this package. Let's open VS Code and from terminal menu create a new terminal go to your favorite folder i'm going to go to desktop and install this package if you get any error in installing this package go to this url pnpm.io and click on get started follow the instruction here to fix the issue Next step is creating next app. I'm going to run this command on terminal to create 
release candidate version of next app because currently version 15 of next app is in release candidate rc mode i need to put at sign rc at the end of it but if in your time the version 15 is released you can simply type latest and then press enter so i'm entering rc to get latest version of react next.js version 15 by running this command you need to answer some questions enter app name project name Set the name to next 15 admin dashboard. Accept default answers. Type script yes, ESLint yes, Tailwind yes, RC folder no, and app router yes. Also for Turbo Pack no. And for customization, for customizing import alias no. Press enter to install all packages by, by PNPM package manager. After running this command, open file menu from open folder. In the desktop, select next 15 admin dashboard and open package.json. In the dependencies section, you should have React 19 and next 15 in the dependency packages. Let's run the project from terminal, new terminal, pnpm dev. Press enter. Here we are using Next.js version 15 and project is running locally at this address. Control click on it. And there we are. We have Next.js project running at this address. Let's go for next step. Based on the plan, we need to create constant.ts in live folder. We don't have live folder here. Let's create a folder named live and create constant.ts to define all constant in this project. New file in live constant.ts. Here is the code for constant.ts. Export const server URL. We read server URL from environment variables. For this variable, next public server URL. If it doesn't exist, the default server URL is localhost column 3000. So when you deploy this project on Versal, it's going to be replaced by your Versal URL. App name, it comes from the environment variable, app name value. Otherwise, if it's null, use next admin. For description, again, check for environment variable. Otherwise, use this value. And the last one is items per page to list products, invoices, and other data. If there is no value for this environment variable, use 5. So let's create the environment variable file in empty space in Explorer, new file, dot env dot local. There we are. I'm setting environment variables for server URL, app name, app description, and items per page. You can change it to whatever you like, and it reflects on your application. Let's go for next step. It's creating font.ts in components shared folder. In the root, right click, new folder, components. Inside that new folder, shared. And inside shared new file, font.ts. Here is the code for font.ts. We import enter and Lusitana font from Google. Next, slash font, slash Google. Then, Create a new instance of interfont and set options subsets to Latin. For Lusitana, create a new instance of this font, set subset to Latin like this. But for weights, we have 14, it's for normal font and 17. But for weight, we have two different font weight, normal and bold. We use these fonts throughout the project. Next step is creating layout. Open layout.tsx in app folder, get rid of all content, and replace it with this one. Import yellowwalls.css, enter font from fonts folder, app description name and server URL from constant folder, constant.ts, and metadata from next. Export const metadata and set the title of this page to app name. But before that, 
we have a placeholder person sign s it it's like a template that when we define a page and set a title will be replaced with this value so let's say we have home page it's going to be home page pipe app name the default value is app name set the description and metadata like this and then export default function root layout it accepts children of type react node and inside that we return html inside render body and set class name to the font the inter font i'm using anti alias to make the font better and render children inside this also i'm setting suppress hydration warning to get rid of error when we change the theme in next lessons let's go for next step it's creating app logo component save this file go to component shared right click new file app logo here is the code for this component export default function app logo it's a react component that return a link link comes from next slash link set href to home page and set class name to flex start then Render a dev inside this link. Set font from Visitana, import it from dot slash font, and set it to flex, flex grow. Create vertical, create horizontal space too. Inside that, render an image. Image comes from next slash image component. Set src to slash logo.png, set width and height, alternative text to app name logo import app name from constant for and right after logo render app name like this make the font size to text dash extra large so you need to put logo.png inside your public folder right here i already have a logo and i put it in logo.png if you want to use this one just go to the repository in public folder download this file from my github repo and put it like this in your public folder there we are app logo is done let's go for next step based on the plan we need to edit page.tsx in app folder in app open page.tsx get rid of main entirely and replace it with this one create main element set class name to flex full height and flex column inside that render a dev as flex set height to 20 and render app logo here imported from component slash shared right after that create another dev set it to flex grow so so we divide the screen in two rows. First row is app logo and second row is for the content. Set margin top to four, make it flex row column and for medium device mix, make it flex row. So in mobile devices, we have item stacked. They push down like a stack. But in large devices, we have two columns. The first column is for showing this message welcome to admin dashboard let's import font and import link from next slash link right after this message create a link to redirect user to the login page i'm using arrow right icon so we need to install it from lucid react we will do it in next lesson so here simply comment it out Right after that, create another dev in the left, in the right side, I'm going to render two images based on the mobile or desktop. I have two hero images like this. So you can find these images from public folder in my repository. Here is hero desktop and this one is hero mobile. Save the code. Let's check the result. There we are. In this address, localhost column 3000, we have header, content, login button, and a screenshot of the project. Open inspector, click on mobile, and there we are. Here is the mobile version of homepage. Close it. There we are. In this lesson, we created homepage of admin dashboard. In next lesson, we create login form 
and proceed this project. Until that lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to create login page. When user go to home page and click on login, we're going to implement login page like this. And by entering correct email and password, we redirect user to dashboard page. We implement dashboard page in next lessons. The focus of this lesson is creating login page and implement authentication on admin dashboard. To get the source code of this lesson, go to repository. In the comment section, find commit to create login page and use this code throughout this lesson. Let's get to code. Here is the plan to create login page. Let us start by installing NextAuth and BigCrypt.js. We use BigCrypt.js to encrypt password and NextAuth to implement authentication. Open your terminal and click on Add to create a new terminal and pnpm add next-auth at sign beta and bcrypt.js. Next step is installing types of bcrypt.js as dev dependency. Run this command and add the types of bcrypt.js. Next step is creating placeholder data or sample data. In live folder, create placeholder-data.ts. Go to live folder, new file, placeholder data. In this lesson, we're going to just create users array and this array contains one user object for each user. We have ID. It's just a simple UUID. Username is user. You can put it whatever you like. Email is sample email user at snacksmail.com and password comes from. And for password, we use hash sync from bcrypt.js and encrypt 1 to 6 as password using 10 as salt of this hashing process. Import hash sync from bcrypt.js like this and at the end export users. Next step is creating auth config in the root of project. I mean right here, right click, new file, auth.config. We're going to use this file in the Next.js middleware. So let's create auth config here. Import types next auth config from next auth and export const auth config. It's an object that should satisfy next auth config. In this object, we have pages and inside pages, we have sign in page. It redirects user to the login page when user want to log in. In the provider, we have nothing. It's just an empty array because we're going to use this in the middleware. And we want to use Bcrypt there. So we need to, because this file is going to be used in middleware and the middleware will run in non-JS environment like edge functions. Because we cannot use Bcrypt in edge function, I put it as empty. And in another file, I implement provider for credential login. In the callback section, define an object that contains authorize and authorize accept of request and from request accept next URL. What we're going to do here, when user want to login to the website, this function will be run. Here we check user authentication from auth.user if is login is true and check the path name. If it starts with dashboard, it is protected URL. So here we check if we are on dashboard. I mean, if this page is protected and user is logged in, everything is okay, return true. So user proceed to the next step to to open the dashboard page. Otherwise, return false, it redirect user to the login page 401 error. If is dashboard is false, it means that it is a regular page. If is login is true, then we redirect user to the dashboard page. At the end, return true. So if you try to go to the home page, and if you already logged in, you will be redirected to the dashboard page. Next step is creating auth.js. Let's create this file. 
new file in the root auth.js. Here is the code for auth.js. Export cons auth, sign in and sign out from next auth, import next auth from next auth package. For this function, pass an object and get all previous data from auth config. Here we have auth config, we need to import it from here. At the very beginning, import auth config and concatenate auth config with provider. In the provider, we are going to implement credential authentication, import credential from next auth. And inside this, define authorize. When user try to log in, this function handle authentication. Here is the code for authorize function. Import users from placeholder data and call find function on users. We are going to try, we're going to find a user with this email, the email in the credential. If user does not exist, return null, error message, invalid email or password. Otherwise, compare password in the credential, credential contained entered email and password by user in the login form and compare password in the login form with the user password. Here, the user password is encrypted. So I'm using compare function from bcrypt.js to compare encrypted password with decrypted password, the plain text password. If password match, return user. Otherwise, return null and null stand for error message invalid credentials. That's it about auth function. That's it about auth.ts. Let's go for next step. Next step is creating middleware.ts, new file, middleware.ts. Here is the content of middleware.ts. First of all, import next auth and import auth config from auth config.ts. Then export default next auth, pass auth config as parameter to this function and get auth object from this function. By having this, all requests will be passed to the next config and inside that authorize function check user authentication for us. Also export config like this and here we are going to skip apis folder static folder in next and also all svg png and jpg files good next step is creating user dot actions go to live folder create new file create new folder for actions we're going to use server actions new file user actions dot ts because we're going to put user server actions here mark it as use server it's going to be run only on server side and then export async function authenticate we're going to use this function to authenticate user it, it accepts two parameters previous state of type string or null and form data Inside that, create try catch block and in the try part, call sign in function from next off, call sign in function from at sign slash off, off.ts. First parameter is the type of login, it's credential, and second one is form data contains user and password. If there is an error, check the error if it's, the, it's instance of off error imported from next off. Check the type. If the type of error is credential, display invalid credential. Otherwise, display general error. Something went wrong. Next step is installing ShadCN UI because we are going to use ShadCN to create login form. Go to this link and follow the instruction here. We already installed Next app. So let's go for next step because we're going to use PNPM click here and select pnpm go back terminal paste the command here it's pnpm dlx chat cnui at sign latest in it it takes a while to install packages and here we need to answer some questions which style would you like to use the default which color slate use css variables yes 
and then it initialize project and install dependencies for us. After installing and initiating ShadCN, it's time to install some components. First of all, we need to install button and card component by running this command pnpm dlx chat cnui at sign latest add and then enter the name of component that you're we're going to use here i'm i want to install button and cart run this command press enter to install button and cart after this it's time to create a component for a login inside component shared create login form dot tsx component shared new file login form here is the code for login form export default function login form and here because we are going to implement a form with server actions i'm using use action state from react it's a hook to implement forms in react app from this hook get error message form action and is pending as first parameter pass the action that you are going to run when user click on submit button import authenticate from user action and second parameter is the default values mark, mark it set it as empty in the return part of this component create a form and set action to the form action then create a dev set it to flex one as heading one enter this value please login to continue set the class name to the class name of set class name to lusitana class name the, set the font size here imported from dot slash font margin button three and mix make text to xlr large then create a div to render input fields inside that create another dev in this dev we're gonna render email input box so first of all render email and set html4 to email so we need to have another dev with input in it and the id should be email to connect this label to this input box in this input box set class name to peer block w full rounded border and I'm using peer to connect this input to this icon to render at sign icon inside the input box. Set the name, type, and ID to email and placeholder, enter your email address. For at sign icon, we're gonna use Lucid icon by installing ShadCN. Automatically, Lucid icon will be installed in your package.json lucid react package import at sign from lucid react then go for creating password input box create a label for password and input for password set class name to relative to render it next to the password label set id type and name to password and for icon of password use lock keyhole icon import it from lucid react at the end render a dev create margin top four and render a button here by installing this packages button and card from chat cn you should have ui folder inside component and in this folder we have button and card so i can simply import button from dot dot slash button set type to submit and login render arrow right icon from lucid react next to it then create another dev in this dev i'm going to render error messages so if there is an error render circle alert imported from lucid react and in text red render error message save the code and let's go for next step it's time to create a page.tsx for login so we need to go to app folder create a new folder for login 
and inside that create a page.tsx file. Here is the code for login, export default function login page and in the return part render a dev set flex justify center item center full height and full width. Inside that create main element set class name full width. The max width is for middle devices. So it's going to be at so it's going to be at most 28 RAM and put it center by setting max auto mx auto import card from chatcn chatcn components are in at sign slash component slash ui card header app logo card content create vertically space for and import login for that we created in shared folder awesome it's done let's check the result before going for the result go to the page.tsx in the root of project and uncomment arrow right icon and import it from lucid react and wrap the link inside a button like this import button from chat cn i mean the component ui folder make it as child and set class name to 50 percent width save the code let's check the result here we have login button click on it then we get this error in a login page it says use action state can be used inside client component so we need to add use client as directive at the beginning of login form add it and let's check the result awesome here i click on home page and then click on login page as you see we have login page let's enter user at sign next mail.com and one to six and click on login we get 404 error if we check the console log we get this error it says missing secret please define a secret go to dot env dot local and add a section for next off you can generate off secret by running this command let's open a new terminal and run this command open ssl rand dash base 6432 and then copy this and add off secret variable replace it with the generated secret by this command also set us url to localhost column 3000 save the code and then restart the server stop project pnpm dev it's starting clear the cookie of browser for this address then go to home page and click on login i'll be redirected to the login page enter user at sign next mail.com and one to six and click on login I will be redirected to the dashboard page, but because we did not implement this page, we get 404 error. If I try to go to the home page, I will be redirected to dashboard. That's the behavior that we expected. So let's call it a day and until next lesson, bye bye. In this lesson, we are going to create dashboard screen. When user login to their account we're gonna create this beautiful dashboard page it is mobile responsive if we go to mobile view we have this page in the header we have next admin the brand of the website and logo then we have icons for home page invoices and customers and on the right side we have sign out and change theme button in desktop mode we have a sidebar like this in the header menus we have invoices home and customers and at the end we have change theme we're going to implement this feature together and sign out also for content section we will create a skeleton loader like this and in the next lesson we replace them with real data 
source code of this lesson is in the repository at this link. Go to commit section and open commit free create dashboard screen. Use this code throughout this lesson. Let's get to code. Here's the plan to create dashboard screen. First of all, add dropdown menu component from chat CN by running this command, open a new terminal and run this command. Then install next theme package to enable user to switch between dark and light theme. PNPM add next theme. Next step is in layout.tsx. Go to layout.tsx, remove children and replace it with theme provider as a higher order component HOC imported from next theme set attribute to class default theme to the system theme so it detects system theme automatically by having enabled theme flag and disable transition on change step four is creating mod toggle component inside component shared folder create dashboard folder component shared new folder dashboard and put all dashboard related components inside this folder the first component is mod toggle to create a drop down menu to switch between dark and light theme mod toggle.tsx here is the code for this component export default function mod toggle inside that use use theme from next theme and get access to the theme current theme and set theme to change theme between dark and light import user state and use effect let's remove react from here and import user state and use effect inside use effect i'm going to render this component only on client side so what i'm doing here is to define mounted and set mounted as an state as a state and in the use effect set mounted to true if mounted is false return null by having this trick this component only will be rendered on the client side and in the server side it returns null so there is no mismatch error between rendering client and server since i'm using user state and use effect mark this component as client component by adding use client at the first line of this component let's go for the render part i'm going to render a drop down menu imported from chat cn i already install it imported from component slash ui slash drop down menu do the same for other components in this drop down menu the first item inside this is a button so it's a drop down menu trigger when user click on it the drop down content will be opened so open drop down trigger render a button from chat cn set variant to ghost and make it make it full width and i'm not going to create border around it when it's focused by having this css class from tailwind inside that render sun moon icon and if i'm in medium device or bigger render the text like this it's current theme let's say it is dark theme or if the theme is light it's gonna be light theme for the theme because it's in all lowercase i'm using capital first letter to convert it to convert the first letter to capital case for this function go to utils and after cn function it's generated by chat cn automatically create capital first letter to convert the first letter to uppercase you can find this type of functions by ai just type create a function capitalize first letter and you get this type of function easily in your code import it here next step is creating drop down content when user click on sun moon icon i'm going to open this drop down content inside that create the first row by defining drop down label 
So import all of them from component UI dropdown menu like this. After this menu, create a separator and then render dropdown menu checkbox item. This checkbox item is for system theme. So if theme is system, make it as checked. When user click on it, change the theme to system. Next item is for light and the last one is for dark. Save the code, go back to plan and create site nav component inside dashboard. Next to mod toggle, create new file, set it to sitenav.tsx. Here is the code for sitenav, export default function sitenav and return a dev. It is full height, flex flex column, create padding vertically and horizontally. Let's make it simple by adding P3. So it's flex, flex column, full height and padding three vertically and horizontally. The first row, because it's flex column, the first row is app logo imported. Second row is a dev. It's a container for header links, navigation links. Let's create navigation links. In the same folder, create new file, new file, nav-links.tsx. Here is the code for navigation link. Make it as client. Create an array for links. The first item is home. The name is home, href is dashboard, and the icon is home icon. They comes from Lucid React. Second one is invoices. The URL is dashboard slash invoices. It doesn't, the icon is files. And then the last one is customers. To this address icon is users icon. Inside this React component, get the path name and if path name equal to href of current link in the links array, then set the class name to empty. Otherwise, set the class name to text muted foreground. So it's it makes it like gray color. It's not active. I'm using button variant to use ghost variant of button. It comes from component UI button for the class name and concatenate this class with justify a start with this conditional class using CN and CN comes from utils. It's like merge classes together. So what we did in navlink component is to render links in this array next to each other using button variant of chat CN. Go back to site nav and import nav link here. Inside the parent div of nav links, the class is flex flex row. But if we are in middle device, they are going to be stacked vertically. After rendering links, it's time to create a div, creates a space between nav links and buttons for changing theme and sign out. Or mode tackle component we created at the beginning of this lesson and then render a form to shape sign out button import sign out from at sign slash off and render a button from chat cn power icon from lucid react and if we are in medium device display sign out caption for this button. When user click on it, we call this action in the server side, sign out user from their account in next off. Great. Next step is creating layout.tsx. So I need to create dashboard folder inside app. Go to app new folder dashboard and inside that create layout tsx to create layout for dashboard section of this project here is the code for dashboard export default function dashboard it accepts children of type react node in the return part create a dev set flex for this dev 
full height flex column so i'm going to create a row for header and a row for content so i'm making flex column make it full a screen for medium device flex grow and for medium device overflow hidden inside that create two dev one dev to create sidebar and the other for the main content import sidebar for medium device create width 52 it's 2.8 pixel and for mobile device it's like a row that occupy the whole width this one by having grow in this dev the rest of parent space it's gonna be occupied by this dev so this one is main section and this one is sidebar in middle or bigger device and header for mobile device great let's add a new folder inside dashboard i wrap it inside parentheses so it's a road group overview this value is not part of the url and inside that create page.tsx here is the content for this component create main element inside that create heading set class name to lusitana imported from component shared fonts first dev is for displaying statistic cards and second dev is to display charts and other data it's just a placeholder we will add real data in next lessons by having these changes let's check the result awesome here is the result at this address localhost column 3000 slash dashboard let's sign out go to home page log in enter user and email email and password and there we are i have next admin in the citana font and the heading one in the content section of dashboard i have a placeholder for cards and charts here we have nav links home page invoices and customers 404 error and i have system theme when i click on it drop down menu opens and i can change theme to light or to dark great let's add a skeleton placeholder for content when we are loading data i'm going to sh use a skeleton component from shatsy and to display loading while i am getting data from back backend but here in this lesson we implement just the skeleton the loading and for next lesson we implement fetching real data first of all install skeleton from shatsy and by running this command in a new terminal pnpm dlx shatsy and ui latest add skeleton then create a skeletons.tsx in shared folder let's go to components shared new file skeleton.tsx here is the first component for a skeleton it's cart skeleton statistic cart skeleton import cart from dot dot slash ui slash cart from chat cn cart header and a skeleton after installing this you have access to a skeleton component import cart content for cart header set class name to flex flex grow space y0 and a space x3 for cart header i have two placeholder one for icon so i'm setting a skeleton class width six and height six and rounded full so it's gonna be rendered as a circle loading as a circle and this one is for the content of a statistic the caption the title of this statics is let's say number of customers number of number of users so i'm going to render it as a textual placeholder so i'm setting width to 20 and height to 6 to match it with the icon the circle icon here it's installed a skeleton so it's time to import it like this great i have cart skeleton let's go for next one this one is cards skeleton so in the dashboard overview i have four cart like this so i'm creating a placeholder for four cards 
using cart skeleton component. Next one is revenue chart skeleton. Create a cart, make it full width for medium device. Use call span four. Create cart header. The skeleton for cart header is a textual placeholder set width to 26 and margin button to four. And the cart content here is the dashboard placeholder. So I'm creating a skeleton set height to 450 pixel like this. Next class is for invoice skeleton. So I'm going to render latest invoices, create a dev, set flex, flex, grow, and then create a, another dev inside this as a child, make it flex item center space X4. Inside that create a skeleton for an icon, rounded full, and inside that next to this, create a dev and put two content in two separate rows using two skeletons set width to 20. So textual placeholder for first row and second row. After that, create a skeleton set width to 20 and set height to six for another placeholder for textual data. So by having this component, I have a placeholder for single row invoice. I'm creating another component to create one, two, three, four, five rows of latest invoice skeleton. So it's like a table placeholder. And the last component in skeleton.tsx is dashboard placeholder. I'm mixing here is a skeleton for the heading one. I mean the dashboard, a dev to render for statistic card next to each other, and another dev to render two columns, first for revenue charts and second for latest invoice skeleton. Save the code and go back to page.tsx in dashboard overview and use them right here. Replace all content inside main with this one. Dashboard is dashboard as it is. Next one is a dev to render cart skeleton imported from shared folder and import revenue and latest invoice skeleton like this. Here is the result. As you see, it's like a professional website that display a skeleton for contents that we are going to load from backend. In the next lesson, we replace them with suspense to get data from backend and replace them when they are ready with the skeletons here. Until that lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to create tables for admin dashboard on Versal Postgres. At the end of this lesson, we have a list of tables with sample data. To get the source code of this lesson, go to repo in the commit section, find commit four, connect to database, and don't type any line of code. Just use this code throughout this lesson. Just get the concept of what I'm doing in this lesson. Let's get to code. Here is the plan to connect to database. First of all, we need to create Postgres database. I'm going to use Versal, but you can use any other service providers like Neon, Superbase, or other Postgres databases. Go to this address, select Versal database, get started, click on create database, and then you will have set a name for your database, here, you will have connection string for your database. Select .env.local, show secret, and copy this line. The first line is enough. Don't, you, don't use mine. I'm going to delete this database. So use your own one. Then go to .env.local and paste that line here. You need to set this in your Versal deployment in the environment variable for your Versal deployment when you want to deploy this website on Versal. Save the code. Let's go for next step. Install two packages, the result ORM and Versal Postgres. Go to terminal, open a new terminal, and pnpm add the result ORM Versal Postgres. After this, we need to install dev dependency, the result kit. We use this, we use this package to browse database through Versal 
through the result studio in a new terminal pnpm add dash the result kit dash d the result kit next step is creating env dash config create db folder and env dash config there in the root of project right click here new folder db and inside that new file env dash config.ts what i'm gonna do here is to access load env config function from next env call process.cmd to get current project directory and load environment variable from the project li library from next env you are getting this error it says we need to install next env type declaration let's install it pnpm add copy this paste it here and put at sign rc because we're going to install the version 15 of next.js next step is creating a schema.ts inside db right click new file schema.ts in the result orm we need to create a schema to define tables and columns for each table here is the schema the first table that we are going to define is customers table export const customers and it's equal to pg table function call pg table function from the result rm pg core the first parameter is the name of database and second parameter is list of columns first column is id it's of type uuid by default i'm going to generate uuid version 4 by calling this command use sql from the result rm and here enter sql function uu id generate v4 from postgres database make this as primary key and it cannot be null for name email and image url for customers i'm defining them as varchar set the length and make them mandatory next table is for revenue we have only month and revenue of type a string and integer also make table dot month make this column unique by defining unique key unique index from the result or mpg core for users i'm going to define id of type uuid set name email and password of type varchar and string and at the end make email unique for invoices like other tables create unique primary key uuid primary key set customer id amount status and date if you would like you can add relations between invoices and tables and customers but to keep it simple i just define tables and there is no relation between them in real world application you can add this feature to make your database model stable and consistent next step is creating the result.ts we use this file to connect to the database inside db create new file the result.ts here is the code import a schema from dot slash schema i mean this folder this file then import the result from versal postgres in the result rm and import sql from versal postgres you know this sql is different from this one which is from the result rm then to connect to the database call the result from versal postgres and pass sql from versal postgres as first parameter to this function and as second parameter pass an object that contains a schema as then export default db next step is creating the result config in the root of project we use this file to migration to seed sample data and also for migration create new file the result config.ts here is the code first of all import env config then import define config from the result kit and then export default this function the result define config function and pass this object set the schema path the output path for migration dialectic should be postgresql and for 
DB credential set URL to the Postgres URL that we have defined in env.local. Great. Next step, updating sample data in placeholder data. Go to placeholder data. Before export, add sample data for customers. Here I have an arrays of customers like this. You can add whatever you like, but it should be in this format. Then go for invoices. Sample is invoices. Next page of invoices. And then last page of it. At the end, I have revenue sample data. Here is sample data for revenue for users. And get rid of this one. Export users, customers, invoices, and revenue. Save the code. Let's go for next step. It's seed sample data. In DB folder, create new file seed.ts. Here is the code. Import ev env config. Import all tables from. Import all sample data from placeholder data and import db from the result. Also, we need a schema here and exit from progress process. When we have done seeding data, we need to exit from terminal. Here is the function to seed sample data. Create main function as an async function that has try catch block. In the catch part, if there is an error, there is an error, console log error, and through fail to seed data error. Inside try part, here I'm using transaction from the result. So call db.transaction as parameter to transaction define pass an async function that accept transaction instance, set the name to tx, and inside that call delete for revenue table, invoices table, customers, and users table. And then call insert for a schema table and sample data for users table. And for sample data for users, I'm using users from this field, the placeholder data. Do the same to insert data for customers, invoices, and revenue. If there is something wrong in this block, automatically DB transaction from the result will roll back and clear all changes from the database. If everything is okay, it commits changes and all changes will be done in one shot. Good. That's it about this step. After creating a schema in a schema.ts, we need to create tables in Postgres database. To do this, run this command npx drizzle result kit dash push. By running this command, all changes inside schema.ts will be applied to the database on Versal. It's done. Let's go for next step and it is running and it is seeding sample data type npx tsx and then path of typescript file seed.ts press enter that's it database seeded successfully to check the result type npx the result kit dash studio and then open this link it's loading Postgres database for us, uh -huh. list of users, revenues, as you see, they are seeded successfully and we have tables with sample data. Great, that's it about this lesson. We successfully connected to Postgres database on Versa. We created customer, revenue, users, and invoices table there, and we seeded sample data from terminal. Next lesson, we use this data to shape admin dashboard. Until next lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we're gonna fetch data from database and render statistic cards on dashboard screen. 
source code of this lesson is here go to repository and in the comment section find commit 5 load data from database use this code throughout this lesson let's get to code here is the plan to load data from database first of all create invoice.action.ts in actions folder live actions new file invoice.actions what we're gonna do here is to define fetch cart data it's a function it's a function like this it's an async function that gets statistic data for dashboard screen in a try catch block call db import db from db slash drizzle dot select and in the select function define this object as parameter count equal to count function from the result ORM import count from the result ORM and use it here what it does is to count number of records inside this table in the from function chaining function I define invoices imported from db slash schema by having this line we have number of invoices but it's just promise I don't use await here because I'm going to group this query with other queries in this line promise at all second data that I'm going to show is number of customers very similar to what we did for invoices and the third one is invoice status here I'm using select function from DB and inside that I have two fields paid and pending number of paid invoices and number of pending invoices I'm using SQL function from the result ORM so import it like this it returns a numeric value so I'm using generic type number and inside this I need to put SQL statement using sum and as parameter to sum function case when means if a status is paid then return amount otherwise return zero so by having this line amount of paid invoices will be set to the paid field do the same for pending get this data from invoices table here I'm using await promise dot all and in an array pass all promises that I have defined in previous lines in the data by accessing to data array the first array contains records return value of first promise second one contain customer count and the third one contain invoices status so I'm setting this data to related fields here import from currency go to utils.ts and define format currency function like this it accept number amount of type number and then divide it by 100 because the number is in cents I'm going to convert it to dollar and then call to locale string to convert it to currency usd and style currency then import it here and pass paid and pending amount as parameter to format currency and save them inside total paid price invoice and total pending invoice at the end return this data as an object if there is an error raise error message fail to fetch card data let's go for next step it's creating a component named stat card wrapper go to component share dashboard new file stat cards wrapper it's a component that we're going to use to show stat cards here is the code first of all define an object named icon map because in cards i'm going to show list of icons because next to each card I'm going to show an icon for collected use banknotes icon for customers users icon for pending invoices clock icon and for invoices inbox icon then define stat cards wrapper 
as a React component, it's a server component because we are using async here, and then fetch card data and put them in these variables. Fetch card data is in the invoice.actions we created it right here. Then return an empty container that contains one, two, three, four stat card. Stat card is a component that I will create later here, but it accepts two, three parameters title. The first stat card is collected, value, the value that should be shown in this card. It's the first one is total paid invoices. And then the type is collected. I'm using this one to find the correct icon. Next stat card is pending. Next one total prices. And the last one is total customers. In the stat card component, we accept three properties, title, value, and type. Here is the type of them. And get the icon using icon map function and pass the type to this array to get the correct icon. Then in the return part, render a card imported from ShadCN, a card header, check the icon. If it exists, render icon with this heading, this height and width. Otherwise, render nothing. Then render H3 to render title of the card, close card heading and go for card content imported from ShadCN. In a paragraph, set class name to Lusitana font, import it from dot dot slash font, and use text to extra large and create padding. Render value, value contains the numbers that we are going to render. Save the code, go for next step, in page.tsx in overview, let's update the cart's skeleton. Go to page.tsx, go to page.tsx in dashboard overview, get rid of cart skeleton and replace it with suspense. Suspense is a component from React. The content inside suspense will be fetched from backend Let's import stat card wrapper that we created earlier here. If while we are loading this component, fall back, render this component. So when we are loading stat card data, card skeleton will be shown to the user. And once we get this component ready in the browser, it's going to be replaced with this loading skeleton save the code let's check the result here i'm loading the website refresh aha uh -huh. can you see this here i have stat cards data but if i refresh you can see that we have a skeleton and once we get the data it's gonna be replaced with the real data good that's it about this lesson until next lesson bye bye In this lesson, we are going to implement recent revenue charts like this. When admin goes to the homepage, we're going to show this beautiful chart from Recharts and display revenues by month. Source code of this lesson is here on repository in the commit section, find commit 6, display revenue chart. Use this code throughout this lesson. Here is the plan to display revenue chart. First of all, we need to install two packages to access revenue chart. Open a new terminal and install recharts and react-ease at sign RC because we're gonna install version 15 of React is. It's a package to check if a component is React or not. It's gonna be used by recharts. Next step is creating revenue chart.tsx. Go to components share dashboard. Components share dashboard, new file, revenue chart.tsx. Here is the code for revenue chart. Mark it as client. Export default function revenue chart. It accepts revenue 
It's an array that contains month and revenue values, the data that we're gonna show as a chart. In this component, check revenue if it does exist and it's an array that contains more than one record. Go to the next step, otherwise return this message, no data available. In the return part, render a card, import it from chat CN, make it full width for medium device, show it as a column, render card header in H2, render rev recent revenue, set font to Lusitana. In the card content, set padding to zero. Inside that, I'm going to render rechart components. First of all, import responsive container from rechart, this one, then import bar chart from rechart and pass revenue as data to this component. Inside bar chart, we need to define three components. First one is X axis imported from rechart, set data key to month, font 12, thick line, no need, set it to false and axis line for Y axis imported from rechart again, set font and for tick formatter, put a dollar before the value because the value is is of type price we need to put dollar before it and the last one is the bar chart itself render bar component from rechart set the data key to revenue set fill to current color create radius and set class name to fill primary here data key revenue and data key month they are coming from the revenue array because each object in revenue array contains month and revenue as revenue of this month save the code go for next step it's creating revenue chart wrapper in the same folder create revenue chart wrapper and render this server side component as you see i'm using async to make revenue chart wrapper as a server component because I'm going to call a server action to fetch data from backend. That's why I want to, I need to set it as async. Let's define revenue chart function. Go to invoice.actions.ts. At the very end, define fetch revenue function. In a try catch block, select all data from revenue table imported from db slash schema if there is an error raise the error message go back to revenue chart wrapper and command i import fetch revenue from invoice.actions in the return part of revenue chart wrapper render a card import it make it full width render card header import lusitana font card content and here render revenue chart imported from revenue chart because we have card header and card content here there is no need to have them inside revenue chart so we can simply get rid of all of them and only keep responsive container and get rid of card content and card it's gonna be like this get rid of this and here is revenue chart and revenue chart wrapper as a wrapper for revenue chart component. Let's go for next step. It's going to edit page.tsx in app dashboard overview. Inside this revenue chart skeleton, replace it with this suspense, fallback display revenue chart skeleton. When we get data, render revenue chart wrapper imported from revenue chart wrapper in dashboard shared components. Awesome, let's check the result. Make sure pmpm dev is running. I'm getting the result ORM module not found. 
stop project pnpm add result or and versal postgres install this package too if you don't have in package.json and then pnpm dev delete dot next build of next stop the project and pnpm i to install all packages again and pnpm dev then go to pnpm log in the dependency of recharts make sure that its version is version 19 then delete node module folder stop the project pmpm i and pmpm dev then add mean points size to 4 and check the result after setting mean point size add cartesian grid stroke dash array to 3 and 3 and tooltips import all of them from recharts save the code let's check the result awesome here i have tooltip for each month i have revenue and it's done we successfully implemented re recent reviews in this lesson we are going to create latest invoices table like this when admin login to the dashboard in the home page of dashboard we're going to add latest invoices table with customer image name email and the amount of invoice to get the source code of this lesson go to github.com slash basir and find next 15 admin dashboard here in the comment section find comment 7 create latest invoices table let's get to code here is the plan to create latest invoices table let's create fetch latest invoices function in invoice.action.ts go to invoice.ts.action.ts at the very end create this function it's an async function that has a try catch block inside that we send a query to the database select from the database here is the list of fields that we are going to fetch amount name image url of customer email of customer and id of invoice so we need to join invoices table with customers table using inner join function from the result ORM. as a second parameter for inner join we need to set the fields from invoices table and customer table use eq from the result ORM. after inner join set order by as descending import from the result ORM based on invoices dot date i'm going to get only five records from this query because i'm gonna show latest invoices in dashboard and in the next command use map function and convert invoices dot amount to formatted value using format currency at the end return it if there is something wrong return error message through error message save the code go for next step it's creating latest invoices component go to component shared dashboard component shared dashboard new file create latest invoices component here is the code it's a server side component so i define it using async function latest invoices inside that call fetch latest invoices from invoices that actions imported from live actions invoices dot action in the return part render a card from chat cn card header set font to lusitana class name imported from fonts set the title to latest invoices in the card content import from chat cn render a dev inside that render another dev and use map function on latest invoices and convert each invoice to a dev set key to invoice.id set class name by cn imported from utils merge this class with this one if id does not equal to zero create a border top inside this dev create another dev set flex flex item center 
here we are going to show the image of customer import image from next slash image render image url set alternative text to profile picture set class name to margin right four and make the image like a circle using rounded full set width and height and in a div next to this div in a row render invoice name and invoice email it's the customer name and email after rendering this in a paragraph render invoice amount it's already converted to currency format and after this dev render refresh icon imported from lucid react and set it to update it just now you can work on it to make it dynamic or make it like a button when user click on it refresh data again save the code let's go to the page that tsx in overview tsx in overview and based on the plan remove latest invoices skeleton and replace it with suspense in a, as fallback render a skeleton when we have data from this component render latest invoices imported from component shared dashboard latest invoices save the code let's check the result make sure pnpm run pnpm dev is running localhost column 3000 aha uh -huh. we have latest invoices here here we don't have images go to public and here create customers folder inside that put images with these names a1 jpeg to a6 jpeg you can get these images from my repository in public folder let's refresh the page awesome here we have this beautiful latest invoices table good in this lesson we implemented the last puzzle of dashboard page in next lesson we goes for in next lesson we go for invoices and customers section until that lesson bye -bye. In this lesson, we are going to authenticate users with user table in Postgres database instead of sample data in placeholder-data.ts. To get the source code of this lesson, go to repository in the commit section, find authenticate user from database, and use this code throughout this lesson. Let's get to code. Here is the plan to authenticate user from database. First of all, create get user function in user.actions. Go to user.actions. At the very end, define get user as an async function. It accepts email of type string. Inside that, we send the query to the user's table and find first record where users.email is equal to the email passed as parameter to get user function. Import db from at sign db slash drizzl eq from drizzl orm and users from db slash schema if user does not exist raise user not found error otherwise return the user at the end of this function go back to plan in auth.ts we need to update next auth first of all validate credentials here I'm using Zod to validate the email and password. Email should be of type string and email and password should be of type string and minimum length is six characters. So we need to install Zod, open a new terminal, pnpm add Zod. Zod is a data validator. We're gonna use this to validate all forms in this project. After installing Zod, import it at the very beginning, import the Z from Zod. After parsing credentials, we need to check it. If it is successful, then get email and password from parsed credentials. So it is sanitized data, email and password. Follow this constraints. Here is the place to call get user and pass email to this function get the result and put it in users object user object 
import get user from lib slash actions slash user actions. If user does not exist, return null to show error message. Otherwise, call compare from bcrypt.js and compare the password in the input form with the password in the database for this user. If password match, then return user successful login. So I need to remove this part of code. It's the old part with checking data with placeholder data. But here I'm checking data with users table and sanitize data using Zot. Save the code, get rid of users in placeholder data. Let's check the result. Log out, then go to placeholder data. Change the password to something different. Put seven at the end. Then seed data, npx, tsx, db, seed. Wait a while to seed. Remove all data and seed. Seed it successfully. And then change it back to old password. So in login form, if I enter one to six, I should get error because this time we are checking so in the password form, if I enter one to six, I should get error message because in the database, we updated data, we added seven at the end, but in the placeholder data, we have one to six. Let's test this error message. First of all, enter one to three, one to three, and login. We are getting this error. One, two, three, four, five, six, login. Aha, uh -huh. something went wrong. We're getting this error message. Let's enter one to seven and log in. This time we'll log in successfully and data comes from server actions. Great. We successfully implemented login user through user's database, user table in the Postgres database instead of placeholder data. That's it about this lesson. Until next lesson. Bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement invoices table. When admin log into their account and click on invoices, we're gonna create this page, a search component to search in data and pagination for list of invoices and deleting records. Source code of this lesson is here. In commit section, find commit nine, list or delete invoices, use this code throughout this lesson. Let's get to code. Here is the plan to list and delete invoices. Let us start by installing use the bonds package because we need it in list form. Open a new terminal, pnpm add use the bonds. Next step is delete invoice in invoice.action. Go to invoice.actions at the very end, create this async function delete invoice it accept id of type string and delete that invoice from database where its id equal to the id passed as parameter to this function after this refresh or revalidate invoices url dashboard slash invoices url here is the place that we are going to create list of invoices page then return this message invoice deleted if there is something wrong return this message database error import revalidate path from next slash cache go back to plan and create another function it's fetch filtered invoices after delete invoice create this function it's a sync function that accept query it's the query that we are going to search in invoices and current page is the page that we are going to paginate data and return only this page of data. Get the offset from current page by decreasing current page by one and multiplying by items per page. We already have items but that page in constant that TS. Here we have offset in the try catch block select these fields from invoices and customers we already had inner joins between invoices and customers so i'm not going to duplicate explanation in the where part 
I'm using OR to search query in customer name, customer email, and invoice status. I'm using is like to search to partial search in these fields. It's like SQL like imported from the result ORM and import OR from the result ORM. Sort data based on invoice date descending limit data for items per page and set the offset to the offset that we calculated here based on current page at the end return data if there is something wrong raise an error save the code go back to plan and create fetch invoices pages this function is very similar to the previous one but this time instead of getting fields we just calculate counts of data without any pagination constraint so we want to calculate how many data we have for current filter and then get that data find the ceiling of it divide it by items per pages to calculate total pages for this query then return it back. We use this to render pagination component. Next step is creating search.tsx in shared folder. Go to components, shared new file, search.tsx. Here is the code. It's a client side component, so mark it as client. And render search component, it accepts placeholder of type string. Inside that, we access to the search params using use search params from next slash navigation. Get access to the replace from use router next slash navigation and use path name from next slash navigation. Next step, use use the bonds callback imported from use the bonds and pass this arrow function as parameter to use the bonds callback. So it implements the bonds for us every 300 seconds so if you try to type multiple characters in less than 300 seconds it just run the filter every 300 seconds here i cancel log searching for this term then get the params from search parameters then set the page to one and check the term if it exists set the query to the term otherwise delete the query from params and at the end replace the url with the path name and change the parameter to the parameter that we calculated here in the return part of this component return a dev make it flex flex one then render a search label and an input box when there is a change in the input box call handle search here is the handle search function the bonds function default value comes from the url in the query string and then render search icon at the there we are let's go for next step it's creating buttons.tsx in invoices folder go to components shared invoices component shared new folder for invoices and inside that new file buttons.tsx here we're going to create two buttons update button and delete button for invoice update invoice accept id as parameter and inside that we render a button imported from chat cn set variant to outline and make it as child for link component from next slash link when user click on this button we redirect user to dashboard invoices id of invoice slash edit page we implement this page later as a caption for this button i'm going to render pencil icon from lucid dash react same rules apply to delete button but this time we don't have a link here we call delete invoice with id action so what we need to do in delete invoice is to bind the id of 
invoices invoice that we are going to delete to the delete invoice action using bind import delete invoice from delete invoice in invoice that actions.ts we already created this action and then bind the id to this so here we have delete invoice with id as an action for this form we set delete invoice with id and render a button set variant to auto outline and set type to submit inside that render delete for screen read only and delete and render trash icon like this next step is creating a status.ts in invoices folder the same folder as button create new file status.ts here is the code we need to import badge let's install it pnpm dlx chat cn dash ui at sign latest add badge by running this command we install badge from chat cn in this project then import check icon and clock icon from Brucet react what we're gonna do here is to get the status of type a string if it's paid use secondary color otherwise use default color for the badge check the status if it's pending render pending and clock icon if it's paid render paid and check icon next step is in utils.ts we already have format currency in utils.ts we already implemented this one and let's create format date to local inside util after this render format date to local it accepts data string and locale by default it's en-us convert the data string to date data type and then call intel .date time format option here we're gonna set options for this they have type numeric month short and year of type numeric then call intel dot date time format based on locale and options get the formatted data and call format on the formatter pass the date as parameter to this and return it next step is creating table.tsx in shared invoices table new file tables.tsx here is the code it's an it's a server component async function invoices table accept query and current page inside that get filtered invoices by calling fetch filter invoices from invoice.actions pass query and current page as parameter to this function and get the invoices then render a dev another dev a child dev and the last dev in last dev for medium device it's hidden so this one is for mobile view check invoices if it does exist map each invoice to a div it's full width inside that create another div set it to flex inside that another one and in a new div inside this render image of customer import next slash image render customer image by setting src to invoice dot image url next to that display customer name invoice.name and right after that render invoice.email to render customer email next to them render invoice status imported from dot slash status next to this right after this in a new row for mobile view we are going to render invoice amount import format currency from utils and invoice date imported from live slash utils right after that render two button for updating and deleting invoices import them from buttons dot from this grade this one is for mobile view for desktop view so by default it's hidden for but for mobile device and larger devices it is like a table make it full width and create table header for customer email amount date and status and 
edit column. Then render data in a row. We use TD to create table cells like this. And that's it. Next step is creating generate pagination function in utils.ts. Go to utils.ts at the very end, define generate pagination. It accepts current page of type number and total pages of type number two. If total pages less than or equal to seven, just create an array based on the length of total pages and return them. If current page less than three or equal to three, render this array one, two, three, dot, 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 total pages minus one and total page. If current pages less than, greater than or equal to total pages minus two, render this array. Otherwise, render this array for somewhere in middle. Next step is creating pagination.tx in invoices folder. So in the folder that we have button status and table, create a new file, pagination.ts, and render this client side component. Use client, export default pagination, accept pay, total pages of type number, get path name, search params from next slash navigation, get current page from the query string and define create page URL. It accepts page number of type number of or a string and return a new path based on the page number. Then call generate pagination based on current page and total pages and return all pages as an array. In the return part, we are going to render a dev set class name to inline flex and then render pagination arrow component. We create this one later. We pass direction to left, href create page URL. We create this function. We already created this function here and set is, delay, is disabled if current page is equal or less than one. In a dev, set it to flex and space x minus one, render each item in all pages array to this. First of all, define position to first, last, single, middle, or undefined, the data type of position. If index is equal to zero, set position to first. If it's equal to the length of all pages, last. If all pages dot length is equal to one, set position to single. If it's dot dot dot, the position is middle. Then render pagination number based on the position. And at the end, render pagination arrow for the right side of pagination component. Here is pagination component accept page. href is active and position. Import cn from lib slash utils. Set class name based on the position. And if it's active or position equal to middle, render this dev. Otherwise, render a link. Imported from next slash link, set href to href and class name to class name and render the page. Here is the pagination arrow component. It accepts href direction and is disabled. We create class name based on is disabled and direction. Create the icon based on direction. If it's left, use arrow left icon. Otherwise, use arrow right icon. If it's disabled, render a dev, otherwise render a link. Save the code and go for next step. It's creating page.tsx in dashboard invoices. Go to app, dashboard, new folder, invoices. Inside that new file, page.tsx. Here is the code. Set page title to invoices. Import metadata from next. Then render this server side component page accept search parameters from this we have query and page get the query based on search parameters that query and current page based on the query string calculate total pages from this function we already created this function in invoices.actions 
Then render a full web dev. Inside that, render a dev. Set heading 1 to invoices. Set font to Lusitana. Render a dev. Render component slash shared slash search. And render create invoice. After search, render suspense imported from React. And invoices table imported from component shared invoices slash table. For pagination, import from invoices slash pagination. Let's create invoices table skeleton. Go to a skeleton in shared. At the very end, create invoices mobile skeleton. For this component, return a dev. Make it full width, rounded, mobile, medium device. Rounded medium, padding 4. Inside that, create a dev. Set it to flex in two columns, render circle, text placeholder, and another text placeholder. In another row, render a skeleton, text placeholder, rounded and rounded. And at the very end, render two placeholder for update and delete. Then render another component, set the name invoices table skeleton, and use invoices mobile skeleton for mobile view and render a table with placeholder for table row skeleton. Let's create table row skeleton. Returns, we return table row, set class name to full width border button, create a table cell, inside that create a div and put two skeleton next to each other, a circle and text placeholder. Do the same for other columns, amount, date, and other fields. And here we have the last column to display update and delete button. Then use them here in the table body. I'm going to render six rows using table skeleton component. That's it. Let's go to page.tsx in app dashboard invoices and import this placeholder here. Save the code. In invoice.actions.ts at the very beginning, make this component as server component using use server. At the very beginning of invoice.actions, add use server to run these functions only on server side. Save the code. Click on invoices and there we are. We have invoices list, a table to display invoices, and edit and delete button. Let's check deletion. Click on delete. Uh -huh. It is successfully deleted. We have pagination. Let's go to second page. Awesome. It works. And let's search for brown. Yeah, it works. Good. We successfully implemented invoices list and deletion in this lesson. Until next lesson. Bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement update and create invoice. In the invoices menu, when user click on create invoice, we're gonna create this, we're gonna create this form. User can select customer, enter amount and a status, and then create the invoice like this. Also, user can edit the invoice, set the status, let's say to payment or paid or change the price and click on edit invoice it's been updated to get the source code of this lesson like always you can go to the repo and in the comment section find commit 10 create or update invoices use this code throughout this lesson let's get to code here is the plan to create or update invoices first of all create types folder in the root of project a new folder set it to types and create index.ts inside this folder index.ts. Here is the code. This file contains type definition for all data. The first type is formatted customer table. We have ID, name, email, image URL, total invoices, total pending, and total paid for this type. Next one is customer field. It includes ID and name of customer. And the last type that we're going to use in this project is invoice form. 
It includes ID of invoice, ID of customers, amount, and status. Status is either pending or paid. Next step is in invoice.actions. At the very end of this file, create form schema. Import Z from Zod like this and define a schema of invoice form. It includes ID of type string, customer of type string, amount of type number, it should be greater than zero. Status, it's an enum. It can be either pending or paid and date of type string. Also, create two variation of form schema, one for create invoice and second for update invoice. For create invoice, we omit or ignore ID and date from this model. And for update, we ignore or omit date and ID. The last type that we need to define in invoice.actions is a status, a status of invoice status of result it has errors of type an object that contains customers amounts and a status all of type strings and message of type string or null let's go for next step it's creating create invoice function right after the status define async function create invoice it accepts previous state of type this state and form data of type form data First of all, we need to validate field using Zod. Then check validation. If there is an error, return error message. Then get customer ID amount and status from input fields. They are sanitized in validated fields. Multiply by 100 the amount to have amount in sent. Generate date for current date. And then insert in invoices tables, these values, customer ID, amount, status, and date. If there is something wrong, return error message. Otherwise, revalidate invoices path and redirect user to the invoices URL. Import redirect from next slash navigation. Let's go for defining next function. It is update invoice. It accepts ID, previous state, and form data validate form data if there is something wrong return error message otherwise get data calculate amount in sent and in a try catch block call update on invoices table and set customer id amount and status to the data passed through the form if there is an error return error message otherwise refresh this path and redirect user to the invoices table Next step is creating create form in shared invoices, component shared invoices, create new file, create form.tsx. Here is the code. It's a client side component, export default function form. It accepts customers as an array of customer field imported from at sign slash types. Define initial state imported from invoice.actions and use action status hook from react first parameter is the action that we are going to call when users submit the form imported from invoice.actions and second parameter is initial state then render a form set actions create a dev the first column is the first field is choose customer here i'm using select from html the option is select a customer, convert each customer to an option in this select, and then render circle, user circle icon from Lucid React. If there is something wrong, display error message. Next field that I'm going to get from user is the amount of invoice, use dollar sign. If there is something wrong, display error message. Next one is set invoice a status using field set in the legend set the status of invoice and in a dev render to radio button first for pending a status import clock icon from lucid react 
and check icon from Lucid React 2. At the very end, render a button, import it from ShadCN, import a link from next slash link to redirect user to the invoices page for canceling, and the main button of type submit is create invoice. When user click on this button, in the form, the form action raise create invoice, and in create invoice, we create the invoice. Save this form and go for next step. It's creating breadcrumbs in invoices. In invoices folder, new file breadcrumbs.tsx. Here is the code. Define interface breadcrumb. It includes label href and active. The parameter passed to breadcrumbs is an array of breadcrumb. In the return part, render a nav from semantic HTML5. Inside that, render ordered list. Set class name to flex text flex for medium device, make it bigger. Render li and convert each breadcrumb to a list item. Each list item is a link to the href of breadcrumb if index is greater than breadcrumb less than breadcrumb.length minus one, render a slash, otherwise render nothing. Save the code, go for next step, it's creating pay, create folder inside invoices and page.tsx. Go to app, dashboard, invoices, new folder, create, inside that new file, page.tsx. This code is very simple. Set the page title to create invoice. Render server component page, fetch all customers. Let's implement this function. Go to live actions, new file, customer.actions.ts and define fetch customers as an async function. In try catch block, select from database, import db from db slash drizzle. The These columns, customer ID and customer name, import customers from db slash schema, and order by customer name, return data, go back to page.tsx and command i, import it here. In the main part, render breadcrumbs, import it from invoices as props, set breadcrumbs to an array that contains two objects. First is invoices. The href is dashboard invoices. Second one is create invoice. And here is the URL. Then render the form to create invoice form. Next step is creating not found in invoices, create ID in square brackets when we want to edit uh, an invoice that does not found we need to render this one app invoices right click new folder id in square bracket inside id new folder edit and inside edit new file not found.tsx here is the code not found component return main set class name flex full width full height use from icon from lucid react in h2404 not found and here is the text and link back to the invoices table page next one is creating fetch invoice by id go to invoice.actions at the very end define fetch invoice by id it accept id as parameter in a try catch find that record in the database convert a status to paid and pending and convert amount to dollar then return first item in the invoice as invoice form type imported from types folder if there is an error return error message save the code next step is creating edit form in component shared invoices like create form new folder new file edit form it's very similar to create form import types invoice form and 
customer fields it accept invoice and customers as parameter set initial state of type invoice state in invoice.actions and bind import update invoice from buttons and bind invoice.id to this import use action state from react and initial state oops update state should come from actions that invoice not this one okay update invoice in the return part render a form set action create a dev like what we did for create form create a field for getting choosing customer import use circle from lucid react get amount dollar sign should be imported invoice a status import clock icon and check icon from lucid react at the end render a button to cancel it's a link from next slash link and a button to submit an edit invoice save the code go back to plan it's creating page.tsx in edit folder go to edit folder new file page.tsx here is the code set page title to edit invoice import metadata and render server component page it accept params in the params we have id id in the url get that id and call promise.all to get two data from server actions first one is fetch invoice by id and second one is fetch customers import them from invoice.actions if we don't have the invoice return 404 imported from imported from next slash navigation then render breadcrumbs and in render import edit form not create form so where is edit form here we have edit form edit invoice form so we need to go to here and import edit invoice form pass invoice and customers to this form great let's check the result click on edit let's make edit form client side go to edit form at the very beginning make it use client save it awesome here we have edit form choose customer we can change it to this one change the price like 300 and change it to paid and click on edit invoice as you see it's been updated let's click on create we don't have create button go to page.tsx in invoices find search and right after search render a button imported from chat cn import render a link from next slash link and set href to slash dashboard slash invoices slash create then set the caption to create invoice and and plus icon from lucid react save the code go back here uh -huh. create invoice click on it select a customer enter price set a status create invoice awesome it's been created successfully good in this lesson we finished invoices management page by adding edit and create functionality that's it about this lesson until next lesson bye bye In this lesson, we are going to implement customers table. When user click on customers, we're gonna implement this beautiful customers table. You can search based on customer name and email. Source code of this lesson is in my repository, next 15 admin dashboard. In the comment section, find list customers and use this code throughout this lesson. Let's get to code. Here is the plan to implement list customers. Step one is adding async function fetch filtered customer to customer.action.ts. Open customer.actions. At the very end, add this async function. It accepts a query and filter customers based on the query. To do that, we select from database in customers table and get ID of customer, name, email, and image URL. Also, we're using count and sum 
to get total invoices, total pending and total paid. Import SQL from the result RM, invoices from db slash schema. To access to invoices for current customer, we use left join on invoices table where customer ID equal to invoice.customer ID. Import EQ from the result ORM. In the where condition, filter based on customer name or customer email. Import OR and is like from the result ORM. Then group them based on customer ID, name, email, and image URL to calculate count and sum. Here we are using SQL statement to sum invoice where invoice.status is pending return amount of invoice otherwise return zero in the order by based on customer ID ascending import ascending from the result ORM. At the end change total invoices to zero or numeric value total pending to currency format and total paid to currency format import it from utils here is fetch filtered customer function next step is creating table.tsx in shared customers so we need to create folder shared in component component shared new folder customers inside customers new file table.tsx here is the code Define server component, customer table. It's an async function that accepts customer of type formatted customer table. Import it from types folder. Then return a dev, full width dev. Inside that render he heading one, set title of this page to customer and import Lusitana from fonts. Then render search, import it from dot dot slash search and render a dev inside that another div third div and the fourth div and the fifth div set class name to md hidden so this one is going to be shown only on mobile devices convert each customer in customers array to a div make it full width in the child div render image of customer imported from nexus slash image render email of customer and the status of customer based on invoices, pending invoices, total pending and total paid invoices. And the last column is number of invoices. If user is in desktop mode, make it like a table, but for mobile version, make it hidden. For desktop version, we're gonna render table header to display name email total invoices total pending and total paid and in a table body render these values save the code go for creating page.tsx in dashboard customers go to app folder dashboard new folder for customers new file page.tsx it's a very simple page set page title to customers and render server component page it accepts search params as parameter it includes query and page we just need to get the query if it's null set it to empty string and call fetch filtered customer imported from customer.action pass customer as parameter to customer table imported from shared customer table save the code make sure npm dev is running click on customers there we are we successfully implemented customers table let's search for let's say ricky uh -huh. it's filtered awesome that's it about this lesson until next lesson bye, -bye. in this lesson we are going to enable partial pre-rendering here is the plan to enable partial pre-rendering in our Next.js project. In next.config.mjs, in the root of project, 
add this config experimental ppr equal to incremental next setting is in layout.tsx in app layout.tsx right before export default export cons experimental ppr to true stop project and start again as you see as you see experimental ppr is enabled in ui you don't see any changes but in production when we deploy the product on server on Versal, you will see that it is much faster okay that's it about this lesson until next lesson bye bye Here is the plan to deploy project on Versal. First of all, we need to create GitHub and Versal account. So after creating your GitHub account, go to versal.com at this address and click on sign up. Select hobby, enter your name and click on continue. Select GitHub, so you already need to have GitHub account. Then you will be redirected to this page. Import GitHub repo. We are ready pushed our code to github repo with this name next 15 admin dashboard click on import the project name is your github repo name environment variables go to env file env.local copy all of them paste them here and we need to update localhost here and here so what would be the public server url copy this first of all you need to make sure that it is unique just in a new tab enter this versal.app make sure that it is 404 not found so it's unique replace this with this one for off url do the same get rid of forward slash at the end and click on deploy here is the last commit that we pushed to github repository in your local in a new tab you can always run npm run pnpm build to make sure that there is no error TypeScript or comp compile time error in your code. Yeah, everything is okay. So you have your build version on, on client, uh, on developer machine. So there shouldn't be any error on the Versal. It says deployment started one minute ago. And here is the steps. It's linting, checking, generating pages finalizing page optimization and deploying outputs congratulations you just deployed a new project to versal click on it it opens a new window and there we are at this address next 15 admin dashboard .app, we have our project running let's test it click on login enter user at sign next email one two three four five six seven because i changed it to seven there we are we have project running on versal let's change the theme to light check invoices create new invoice it works list of customers search for customers awesome we successfully deployed our project on versal let's sign out and go to home page there we are that's it about this course until next course bye bye